Lily, listen. It's about the wedding. Oh, hey, Kenda. I was just about to message you. Have you spoken with my mom? Yeah, I'm currently with her. I understand that it's your family home as well. But since I'm staying here, I encounter your mom on a daily basis. Honestly, I never expected you all to move in with our parents. I recall you saying it would never happen in a million years. Anyway, what's up, Kenda? Anyway, let's get back to the topic at hand, your wedding. I heard some rumors about your wedding taking place in Hawaii. Can you confirm that? I was completely taken aback when I heard the news. Well, you heard correctly. Having my wedding in Hawaii has always been my dream. The sun, the romantic sunset on the beach. Rio and I are both ocean lovers. Did you know that we actually met for the first time on a beach? I can remember it like it's yesterday. We both have our hearts set on a beachside church for the ceremony. I can picture it now. Don't you think that's a bit unfair? Unfair? What's unfair about it? I wish I could have had my wedding in Hawaii. Tom and I just had a little wedding at the church down the road. Nothing as fancy as a beach ceremony in Hawaii. I thought it was a lovely wedding. Just close family and friends, it was really heartwarming. We all had a great time too. No, it wasn't. I had to compromise on so many things. I wanted a wedding somewhere glamorous and I had to give up on a designer dress. I had the whole thing planned. At least two wardrobe changes. I gave up on all of that. I had this vision of me coming down a river on a gondola, a big Italian gondolier singing and little girls throwing rose petals into the water. And I didn't get the ten-layered cake I had wanted. A gondola and ten-layered cake? What age do you think we live in? This isn't the good old days you know. I've been to a few weddings recently and nobody is going all out like that. Imagine the cost of the cake alone. And coming down a river on a gondola? You'd have to find a church near a river first. You could have searched the internet, but I don't think I've ever seen a gondola company in this town. It's all very well for you to say, you are going to have your fantastic beach wedding in Hawaii. I got a quote from the wedding planner for my dream wedding and Tom flat out refused to even consider it. You're Tom's little sister, so you should have a less showy wedding. You and Rio are just trying to upstage us. Kenda, we've been planning this for a long time. The point isn't to upstage anyone. This is the wedding we want to have so we've worked hard to make it a reality. Well, if you are determined to make me look bad, I'm not going to be at your wedding. And neither will Tom. You won't? That's a shame, but if you really feel that way then I suppose it can't be helped. Yeah, I'm not going to sit through a ceremony that clearly was planned to make our wedding look like it was done on a shoestring budget at a minute's notice. Okay, if that's how you really feel then if I give you an invitation it will just make things worse. I'll take you guys off the list, okay? Then you won't have to think about it. Sorry to make you so upset. That wasn't the intention, I can assure you. Why are you acting like this is going to go ahead? Cancel it and have a small wedding here in town. There are plenty of nice little churches here. And the reception doesn't have to be so fancy either. You can slash the budget in half. I won't have you upstaging us. Why do we have to cancel just because you say so? If you don't want to be there, fine. But you don't have any say over the matter. I'm your older brother's wife. We are the ones who have to carry on the family name. You're off to join Rio's family. You'll be gone and forgotten. As the wife of the head of the household, you'd better listen to me. Uh, what the hell? Since when did you have this kind of authority? Neither you nor Tom are the boss of me. 
I've moved in with your brother and parents, and we are continuing the family name. The least you could do is grant one simple little request. I think I'm more than within my rights to ask that of you. We've already booked the chapel and made all the arrangements. We can't alter anything now without a massive cancellation fee. And it's ridiculous to expect all the guests to cancel flights and hotels. All you have to do is cancel it. That shouldn't be too much of a problem. It can't be done. It won't be done. You may not have had your dream wedding but that's got absolutely nothing to do with us. I'm not cancelling anything so you'll have to accept that. If you aren't going to come, that's your business. We won't have you try and ruin our big day. Well that's extremely unfortunate, Lily. I'll be telling Tom about this. You just wait. Hey sister, why won't you do as Kenda asks? It's not such a big deal. So you heard? Did she tell you what she's demanding of Rio and I? I was stunned. I didn't know how to reply. I'm still at work but I hope you aren't going to make a big problem out of this. You aren't, are you? Just because you didn't give her the wedding she wanted, doesn't mean you have any right to tell me what I should do with mine. I'm still fighting back the urge to give her a piece of my mind. She's your wife so handle it with you. Why do I have to deal with this? You've always been like this. Since we were kids you never listened to anyone. You haven't changed. For once would you just do what you're told? I'm your older brother so could you just do what we ask? You're the baby of the family so it's time for you to listen to the adults. Got it? Hang on, Tom, are you really telling me not to have my wedding in Hawaii? You're dead serious? I thought you might just be going along with what Kenda is saying so as not to cause trouble. I find it hard to believe you actually mean what you say. Of course I mean what I say. Every last word. A small wedding at a local church was good enough for us and it is sure as hell good enough for you and Rio. You probably haven't given any thought to the guests either, have you? How many of them can just drop everything and fly to Hawaii? Not to mention the cost. There must be a lot of friends and family who are going to struggle to afford such an extravagant wedding. Everyone I invited said they'd be happy to come and we're looking forward to it. They could always have said they couldn't make it. I wouldn't have been offended. No, Lily, they're just being polite. There's no way everyone on your guest list can afford a ticket to Hawaii and a nice hotel. Well, actually, Tom, we are covering travel expenses. It's all included in the plan. Nobody is going to be out of pocket paying for tickets. It's not just the money. Man, Lily, you are so self-centered. What about the time? People can't just go to Hawaii and back in a day. Have you thought about that? Well, they'll need to stay there, of course. But that's why we have chosen a time when most people are able to take a break. And we are only inviting a few close family and friends. It's not going to be a big ceremony. I don't care. You are not having a wedding in Hawaii. That's my final word. You got it? Mom and Dad seem to be really looking forward to it. Look, why don't you cancel and have a big wedding right here? You could invite as many people as you want without causing problems for everyone. As the soon-to-be head of this family, I've thought. Unlike you, I give consideration to everyone involved. We didn't want people to feel the obligation to spend loads of money. We didn't want to put people out of pocket. That's why we had our wedding right in town here. Yeah, because the quote for your initial plan was so ridiculously expensive, right? You had to abandon it because it was going to use up every last penny you had. That's not what happened. It is. Kenda told me. Rio and I started planning and saving for this years ago. That's how it is all possible. We didn't just suddenly decide we'd go to Hawaii. This wedding plan has been years in the making. You guys didn't say for anything and just decided to have the most lavish wedding without any planning whatsoever. 
don't lump us in the same category as you guys. Your budget was only a fraction of the quote, right? How are you qualified to make a judgment on that? You don't know our situation. Any bystander can see you don't have that sort of money. And you went on a trip overseas just before your wedding. Isn't that the same as the honeymoon overseas? Kenda is constantly uploading photos of her fancy lunches and gourmet dinners to Instagram. She spends money like you have an endless supply. It's no wonder you didn't have the money for the wedding she wanted. On your salary, honestly, it would have been impossible with her burning through money like that. Don't you make fun of me. I've got some savings. Like a few coins in a piggy bank? Very funny. How would you know anything about my finances anyway? I'm your sister, remember? You've never grown out of smoking and drinking and you still love the casino, right? Can you even save it all? And what about those model trains you love making? They must cost a lot of money too, right? How do you know all this? Have you been spying on me? You don't realize just how much of your private lives are on the internet, do you? Aren't you worried about the future? You just spend money as if you don't have a care in the world, and then wonder why you can't have the wedding you want. So where do you get off telling us we can do what we've been planning and saving for? You don't have a leg to stand on. If that's going to be your attitude, I won't be going to your wedding, that's for sure. You'll regret this. And by the time you realize what you've done, it will be too late. Do you understand what I'm saying? Your only brother won't be there on your big day. How about that? If you really don't want to come, Rio and I aren't going to force you. It's entirely up to you. We are going to have the ceremony the way we want it. That's it. I'm not going to have anything more to do with you guys. Same here. You'll regret this. Don't come crying to me, begging us to go to your stupid wedding. I'm going to post all over the web about this. I'm 100% against your marriage. Your friends will all see it and then nobody will celebrate your stupid wedding. And it will serve you right. Grow up, Tom. Don't bring other innocent people into this. It's you who needs to grow up if you won't listen to me in Kenda. You're like a spoiled little child. Lily? Are you there? I've just been to the bakery and bought some yummy looking cookies. Do you want to share them? Oh, that's right. You're not here, are you? You must be in Hawaii by now, right? Oh, sorry. I didn't notice your message earlier. The time difference here is messing with me. You and Tom, you'll go ahead and eat the cookies. Are you in Hawaii yet? Yes, we've just arrived at the airport. Well, your parents are here. Has it ended up as just you two having a wedding on your own? No, everything is going to plan. No, everything is going to plan. Mom and Dad are on a flight tomorrow night. Have they been packing? Packing? Of course not. What? What do you mean? They're booked on a flight arriving tomorrow night. Well, there isn't going to be a wedding, is there? What are you on about? Of course there is. We are already here in Hawaii and everyone else is scheduled to arrive over the next couple of days. You mean to tell me you still don't know? You'd better contact the venue right away, then. It was absolutely scandalous that Tom's younger sister was going to have a fancy wedding in Hawaii. We couldn't have that at all, so I canceled it. Thank you. What? You're happy? So it was you that canceled the wedding. What do you mean? You knew? Right after you called the venue pretending to be me. I happened to call our wedding planner. She suspected something fishy was going on. But anyway, I was able to catch her just in time. But I canceled it. You sure did. So, it's canceled then? 
Yes, didn't you just say you cancelled it? Well, yes but. So, are you in Hawaii right at this moment? We used a company dealing in Hawaiian wedding packages. That company got a call from our planner. It turns out our first choice for a venue had had a sudden cancellation and she asked if we'd like to change our ceremony to that place. What? The place we had first wanted to use is really popular and you have to wait years sometimes for a slot. We missed out on our original application by a matter of minutes and settled for the place we thought we were going to use. But you cancelled it so by an incredible stroke of luck and great timing we were able to move our wedding there. That's why I was saying thank you. So you're saying you got your first choice and you are going ahead with the wedding? Yep. Just look at this place. Isn't it wonderful? It's a stained glass chapel like I had dreamed of. And the beach is beautiful. Yes, it's all thanks to you, Kenda. It's going to be even better than we had planned. That's not the way I thought it would turn out. And apparently there was a couple who were able to take the venue you had cancelled. They were over the moon. So you've made two couples very happy. I feel sick. I have told all the guests about the change of venue. Mom and Dad will be here tomorrow night. Look after the house while they are away, will you? Well, okay then, we'll be there. You and Rio are paying for the flights, right? We may as well make the most of the chance to go for free. I've got a nice white dress I could wear. What? No, that's impossible now. You could at least let me take some photos I can use on Instagram. Insta. That's all you care about? I'm sorry, but you aren't on the guest list. I mean, I suppose if you pay for it yourselves, but getting tickets and things at such short notice is going to be difficult. Not to mention expensive. I just want to take a few photos, that's all. That's just not possible either. As I said, the venue is super popular so we don't have any free time there. It's a really tight schedule. So you're saying we can't have any part of it whatsoever? Not at all. There should be a present for you from me arriving the day after tomorrow. What kind of present? It might even change your life. I hope you like it. Bye. Now, I've got to go to the final meeting with our planner. Hey, Lily. What's the meaning of this? Is the middle of the night here, I'm turning off notifications. Don't you dare. Is this your present? Oh, you mean the invoice? Yes, you were the one who cancelled my wedding so it's only right that you should pay. What? Why on earth should we pay? I thought the invoice was self-explanatory. But it ended up in your favor. You got exactly what you wanted and thanked me for it. That was the end result, yes. But it doesn't change the fact that you pretended to be me and cancelled my wedding. But don't worry, as I said, another couple was able to jump into our cancelled spot at the last moment so you'll only be charged. For miscellaneous things like labor costs and travel expenses, rearrangements at the chapel. That kind of thing. $7,000 for miscellaneous costs? If it was the full cancellation fee you'd be adding another zero to that. You're lucky it's only $7,000. Why the heck is it so expensive? Well, there were a few trips to Hawaii to meet the planner and inspect the venue. And of course the admin fee for changing the church. And the contacting of guests to tell them. Oh, and because we changed churches, we also had to change hotels for some of the guests. And I almost forgot the charter bus to pick up and drop off the guests from their hotels. It all adds up. But you happily changed the church. You wanted to. Yeah, and we are forever grateful to you. But it only worked out because I happened to contact the planner. 
If I hadn't called her the whole thing really would have been cancelled. Your deception only came to light out of pure luck. If I had called the planner even an hour later that would have been it. So I'm not responsible for the cost. That's just what it costs to change venues at the last minute. All the plans we made over the months went out the window. We've also had to sit down with the planner again. Paying for this might just help you to see how much damage you've done. You think? I'm going to talk to Tom and have him sort it all out. I'll tell you this for free, that invoice was written up in accordance with state law by our lawyer. You can't just wish it away. You went and got a lawyer involved? If you refuse to pay we'll see you in court. I've got the phone records into recording from the travel agent of you pretending to be me and cancelling my wedding. If that's not enough I've also taken screenshots of your Instagram posts boasting about ruining my wedding. I can easily print out all the malicious comments too. Wait a minute, Lily. You and that stupid brother of mine post every little thing you do. The whole world can see what you're up to. Hang on, I'm just a housewife. There's no way I can afford to pay for all this. I told you my present might just change your life, didn't I? I will be a good chance for you to get off your butt and work. Me? Get a job. Yes, Mom told me the reason you and Tom are living with Mom and Dad in the first place is because you are having financial problems. Mom told me she's asked you repeatedly to pay something towards the running of the house but you never have. And you won't lift a finger to help with the housework. You're a pair of parasites. No, no, we are doing them a favor by living with them. Oh, really? Doing them a favor, are you? I suppose they begged you to live with them, is that it? Exactly. Well then, they no longer wish you to live there so please kindly, get out. The stunt you pulled trying to cancel my wedding was the final straw. They don't have any more patience for you too. They'll tell you themselves when they get back from Hawaii. Hang on a minute. We can't live on Tom's salary alone. We don't have to pay for anything if we live here so we are free to use Tom's pan ourselves. So not paying your fair share is intentional then. It's not that you can't, you just don't want to give up your fancy lifestyle. Whatever, it's time for you to leave. I'm sorry, Lily. You've got to convince your parents to let us stay. Can't be done, sorry. And I need to get some sleep or I'll be a wreck at my wedding. Good night. Don't just abandon U.S. Lily. Next time you'll be talking to our lawyer. If we are forced to leave, we'll be out on the street penniless. You know Tom has it save a cent. Lily? Answer me. Don't block my messages. Our wedding was perfect. Mom and Dad evicted Tom and Kenda from their house. Tom denies any knowledge of Kenda cancelling our wedding over the phone. When he saw the wedding invoice, he was livid. Kenda was furious with him for supporting the wedding cancellation. Their ongoing fights have taken a toll on their relationship, and it seems inevitable that they're headed for divorce. Despite their ongoing conflicts, they are both employed and have to take care of their own financial obligations, including the money they owe me. They're barely making ends meet. Hello, Ryder. Isn't it been a long time? Zane. Hey. What's up? It's been a while, I think. Now that I think about it, we haven't seen each other since college. Yes, I suppose so. How long has it been? Eight years? So, what's new? Is there anything exciting going on? Oh, I was just watching Netflix. So, how about you? That is not what I am asking. I was curious as to what kind of work you've been doing. Just dropping in to see how things are going for you after graduation. Oh, that's right. I'm a fool. It's not at all exciting. Just like everyone else, I work for a typical old corporation in the city. Oh, really? What kind of business is it? 
Don't tell me you're still a new employee, making minimum wage? No, I mean... I suppose we all start somewhere. But come on, you have no one to blame but yourself. I mean, you didn't even try to obtain a part-time job or anything while college. Of course, with no work experience, you'd have to start with low-paying positions. After all, laziness comes back to bite you. It will not get you a job right away. My job isn't bad. I mean, to be honest, I'm pretty happy with where I'm at. Despite the fact that my position may not have the finest job security, I am loving it for what it is. And moreover, it's all good work experience. In contrast to you, I'm doing quite well. See, I've been confirmed to begin working for S Industries, one of the branches of that massive multinational behemoth known as the S Group. Everyone has heard of them, I'm sure. Of course, the remuneration is fantastic as well. How did you end up working for the S Group? Don't you think it's appropriate for an intellectual and successful man like myself? Look at me, someone this important and amazing, contacting an old acquaintance. Aren't I thoughtful? Yeah, I suppose. How did you even acquire this job? So, I was called by a corporate representative who happened to be recruiting for new staff. Oh, wow. They must have been going around recruiting folks. And you were selected? Sure I did. I'm sorry for drifting away from you, who is making little to nothing at your job. But I swear to achieve for the sake of both of us. Hmm. I still can't believe the S Group was simply recruiting individuals. It just goes to demonstrate how valuable I am and how much they rely on people like me and their organization. I'm sorry, but I just keep moving up the ladder while you don't. I suppose we aren't all created equal. So, let me ask you a question. Is that all you have to say to me? Or was there another reason you texted me unexpectedly? Sorry about that. I just wanted to share the fantastic news that, again, I've told everyone in our old friend group. Oh, you contacted everyone else? Sure did. However, it appears that I was the most successful of all of us in the end. Who'd have guessed? I know our small reunion is quickly approaching, so I thought I'd give everyone an um, update on the man I've become before we meet in person. After all, I want them to have a heart attack. Who knows what would happen if any of them found out I was making ten times what they were. You're correct. You stated that this company was recruited by the S Group, which is excellent, but do you know who the top dogs of this branch company are? What exactly are you talking about? And why should I be concerned? I mean, if they need me to learn about specific corporate executives, I'm sure they'll let me know during orientation. Right, right. Next month I'll be a new guy. So, congrats on getting in. I'll be cheering for you. Ryder, what's up? Why, after all, are you in the S Group? I happened to see you at work the other day. If you were working at the same company as me, you should have told me sooner. I mean, I saw you working with my boss. What's the deal? Oh, were you getting assistance in figuring out where everything in the firm was? Wait, I thought I heard from my superiors that some new employee was about to join the company or something, but it had to be you. Oh, you cunning devil. I know what you're up to. Is it correct that you were so envious of my life working at this company that you begged the boss to recruit you? Okay, I've got a great idea. While you're here, why don't I become your mentor? Wasn't your workstation just next to mine? What a bizarre coincidence. This will work perfectly. Take a look at this. I heard that the CEO of our parent firm will be visiting the workplace today. So I'll do my best to demonstrate everything I'm capable of, and he'll have no choice but to raise my pay rate. If I'm lucky, I might even find a new job in the company. Yes, I'm confident he'll be impressed. Okay, now that everything's settled, please come over to my desk as soon as possible. And if you simply utter a few simple lines, I'll be your reliable mentor. Saying, please, teach this worthless bottom-tier human how to do a genuine job. That's it. What did I say, Ryder? I told you to come to my desk as soon as possible. But take a look at what's transpired. It's been an hour, and I haven't seen you once. Check out these messages. You haven't even opened our text messages, as far as I can tell. Who do you think I am? I'm the boss. You better double-check your work decorum. Do you understand that you must respond to any messages from your superiors immediately? So, no ignoring business. 
Fine. Added your supervisor. I'll locate you this time so you know who's in charge around here. Just sit tight. Do you understand what I mean? Isn't that hilarious? That clap on your back? Didn't I do a fantastic job with you? You probably weren't expecting that look, but I've had a master plan to whack your back with that metal ruler. I wish I had videotaped that. So I hope you realize what you've gotten yourself into for ignoring what I instruct you to do. Anyways, Ryder, you understand? You need to quit being so arrogant in front of me. And you best quit ignoring me and get here right away, don't you? You don't want another metal ruler slapped across your spine, do you? I didn't think so. Better yet, since there appears to be nothing out there, perhaps I should smack your head. Maybe I'll slap your butt while I'm at it. Because you plainly are a nasty guy who will not listen to anyone. <laughs> Zane, let me ask you a simple question. You've been here a month, right? Yes, I did. You have one month more than me. You realize I'm the boss around here? You can either follow my instructions or leave. Which one is it, eh? Learn your place right now. Back at you. You should have done more research on who your superiors were. What do you mean? Well, anything. You had better think about all I told you. Ryder, please explain. What exactly does all of this mean? Zane, good evening. Is something wrong? Why is this company CEO a random paper pusher like yourself? What does that even mean? Isn't there some confusion? This is a ruse you devised to exact revenge on me for the time I smacked you. That is the only explanation. There's no way you could be the new CEO of our company's branch. Well, Zane, that's the truth. I am the CEO of the branch where you are so proud to work. There isn't anything else to it. How do you become CEO? After all, you just recently joined. You scarcely had any professional experience prior to this. How could a nobody with no qualifications be the CEO of such a massive corporation? This is all a joke designed to elicit a reaction from me. I'm sure you're befuddled with everything. I suppose I'll go through everything just to make sure we're all on the same page. You see, there was something you were lacking from the start. You were aware that I was not looking for work during my college years, but there was a significant reason for this. Is there a reason? Well, the aim from the start was to succeed my father as CEO of his company. So rather than applying for a job that I would stay at for the rest of my life, I went around bouncing from job to job to learn more about the workplace. My father wanted me to meet a diverse range of individuals before taking over the company he had dedicated his life to. That's why I didn't have a steady income after college. Then I started working for my father in this company, learning all of the necessary skills from my co-workers, until a year later when I was told to succeed my father as CEO. Do you see what's going on now? You never brought this up in college, so how could I possibly believe anything you say now? It's because I've been taken advantage of by many around me in the past just by discussing too much about my personal life. Why would I ever discuss something like this? You know I'm not the sort to brag. Damn it! I would have approached you earlier if I had known. Of course you did. That's why I didn't say anything to you about it. I still can't believe I hit my boss. That's right. My back was extremely red and puffy afterwards. Aren't you relieved I didn't break a bone? If you'd just come out and told me you were the CEO, all of this would not have occurred. There are things you should and shouldn't do whether you're a temporary worker in the organization or a beginner on your first shift ever. And plainly, treating someone as your full inferior and hitting them across the back with a metal ruler is not appropriate. Even a child would understand. And yet, it is precisely what you do to me. Everything was a misunderstanding. Whatever, what's done is done. And why did you insist on being my mentor? Even if I were a novice... Don't you think it's odd that someone with only a month of experience would be looking for others with less experience to teach? Why would you believe the bosses would give someone who has no idea what they're doing a personal assistant? What, after all, was your ultimate goal? To make me your servant? Well, after all, full-time employees are technically more valuable to the organization than part-timers. And because I knew you, I decided to show you the ropes rather than leave you to fend for yourself. As the CEO of this company, I can assure you that there are no restrictions in the corporate policies that specify any of that. Indeed, believing that part-time workers are less valuable than full-time workers is plainly a violation of human rights. Furthermore, did you know that persons such as casual workers and part-time employees might earn more per hour based on the work they do? What's that? 
Don't tell me you had no idea. That was completely obvious to me. Without a doubt. Anyway, take a look. I'll keep you informed. When all we have to determine out your penalty when you hit your own CEO. So sit back and reflect on what you've done in the meanwhile. I'll let you know later this week what happens. Wait. I apologize. Ryder, we need to talk. Why on earth am I being fired? This is all a terrible joke. Why should I bear the consequences of a simple misunderstanding? You've approached the wrong person, pal. The entire headquarters made this decision. But you're the CEO of this company. You have the final say. After all, we're pals. Why are you attempting to defraud me in this manner? You got in through contacts, correct? What do you mean? I heard you were playing all haughty, making it appear as if the corporation had gone out to hire you when, in fact, you simply have connections in the field. What's wrong with that, you say? What difference does it make how I got in? I'm not arguing that getting into the company through contacts is impossible. I'm delighted to welcome anyone who contributes to the success of our organization. So, what's the problem? However, however, even after a month of working, you don't know the names of your superiors, let alone the bulk of your co-workers. And then you had the arrogance to approach me as if you knew how this institution worked, attempting to hire me as your personal servant. I told you I didn't know any better. I was simply attempting to assist an old acquaintance. But it isn't all. You were always trying to talk to Air in the office, weren't you? She told me that was an everyday occurrence. Why do I need your approval to experience romance? Era has a fiancé outside of the workplace, as you are aware. She told you that, but you kept saying how it wouldn't work out between the two of them and how it would be better for her to get with you. Again, why do I need your relationship advice? Please respond to my question. I'm not sure why you've suddenly become defensive. It was definitely getting to the point of harassment, and you could tell by the vibe in the room that she didn't want anything to do with you. Why are you even mentioning Era? She is unrelated to you? Because Era is my closest companion. What? When did this happen? And what exactly? Is it true that I'm not permitted to approach your friends? I came in the other day to monitor the workplace because Era had complained about one of the new recruits bothering her. That is where it all started. And after asking her about the situation... They discovered that it was you who had been disturbing her all along. As a result, I discovered that you got into this company through relationships rather than being scouted. Regardless, this was apparent workplace harassment. With ERA, you crossed the line. But because you were a college friend, I wanted to give you the benefit of the doubt. I wanted to see everything with my own eyes. But see how that turned out? You just assaulted me in broad daylight. Oh, no. But I'm surprised you didn't recognize me as your own CEO at first glimpse. You should have done your homework, huh? You would not have lost your job if you had been more careful. These, however, were your deeds. It's time to take charge. Just a moment. Era arranged everything. She came to you in tears, pleading with you to keep an eye on my actions. I would have gone through with it if you hadn't informed me earlier how essential you were. For God's sake, it was simply a light-hearted jest from a friend. I'm not sure if you understand what an arrangement is, because you're clearly the only one who is incorrect here. Apart from harassing Era, all of this could have been avoided if you had cared a little more about who worked at your own job. Anyway, I'm resuming the talk for a moment, but you will be dismissed. This is the final conclusion made after examining everything you've done during your time here. Please reconsider your position. But wait, I almost forgot about it. I realize it's difficult to bring this up now, but I needed to go to the hospital for a checkup. So I'll be asking you to pay those costs legitimately. But you're going to be all right, right? I mean, you're a super rich person, right? What are you talking about? Why should I pay for your hospital bills? It's called being accountable for all of your acts, right? Anyway, a letter verifying everything will be delivered to your address very soon. You've got to be kidding me. I think I can put this whole thing behind me if you pay for the harm you've caused to my firm up front. So you're going to extort money from my wallet either way? As I've said before, all of this could have been avoided with a simple background check, friend. Anyway, when I say I'll obtain money from you legally, I really mean it. So, expect to hear from my attorney very soon. Please, for the benefit of both of us, consider what you've done and ask yourself, who is at fault here? This is not possible. A uh, super exceptional like myself couldn't possibly lose a job like this. So, it's time to notify all of our other buddies, eh? Obviously, Zane was fired for all of the problems he caused his co-workers, including myself. 
He attempted everything he could to contact his contacts within the organization, but after assaulting the CEO of all people, he had little hope of getting back in. According to what I learned, this is how it always goes, with Zane feeling a touch too dominant at work and treating the people around him as inferiors, ultimately leading to his impending doom of being dismissed for going too far. As I previously stated to him, I dispatched a lawyer to suit him for the incident in which he assaulted me in public. Unfortunately, without a full-time job to provide a stable income, Zane had little choice but to beg his parents to lend him the money to pay off my hospital bills. Not to mention the fact that the only work he could ever get after that was at a factory where one of his pals worked, where he would spend the rest of his days working himself to death. He is gradually returning the funds to his parents, but at one time he messaged me, pleading with me to forgive him and waive the cost. But, as usual, I ignored the message and went about my business. Galvin, Galvin, I'll be out today, okay? I'll see you later tonight. What are you doing going out now? You up, just for a little while. Where are you going in such a hurry? Oh, now we're special. A friend of mine invited me to a restaurant with an all-you, can't-eat dessert buffet. There's even a discount if you travel in a party of two or more. You're going out to eat again? Like I said, it's not a huge issue. I just like to eat. That friend you're referring to? She's the girl I'm always telling you about. Stupid. The one with a self-proclaimed iron stomach. Okay then. I'll believe you on that. Aside from that, do you remember what day it is? Of course I know, foolish. It's Christmas Eve. That's not precisely what I meant, but it is. I can't believe I forgot about the seasonal promotion at the buffet I'm heading to. Today is the last day of the buffet, so I really need to go or I'll miss out. But you're aware that something else is going on today, aren't you? Apart from Christmas Eve and other holiday deals. Aside from Christmas Eve, you mean? It's not exactly jingling bells for me. You have no idea what I'm talking about. Oh, of course, I understand what you mean. Are you certain? Yeah, I'm with you so don't say anything else. I assure you won't have to worry. I'll be home in time for dinner. Speaking of which, if you're going out this afternoon, how is Alice? She said she'd complete her Christmas break schoolwork with a friend at their house today, correct? That's right. I texted her to meet me at your mother's place once she finished her studies for the day. She sent me a thumbs-up emoji, so I guess the message got through. And, of course, I told your mother to expect Alice this afternoon. Did you do it? Thank you for the update. We're having a full dinner today, complete with chicken and cake, right? I'm very excited. I'm going to eat till my trousers buttons come off. The fact that you're saying it while on your way to a buffet confirms my suspicion that you're the one with an iron stomach. You know, traditionally before a big celebratory dinner, people fast so they can really taste the particular meal. Yes, but remember that I'm the type of person that doesn't gain weight no matter how much they eat, so everything is well. That's something I can't argue with. Just do me a favor and limit your food intake tonight. Please don't overdo it. I'm counting on you. Whatever you say. You're laughing, but I'm dead serious about what I just stated. Okay, I must return to work. We'll talk afterwards. Okay, best of luck over there. I'm going out, so I'll see you later tonight. One hour later. I'm truly sorry. It appears that I will not be returning home until much later than I had hoped. Is there something going on? Is everything all right? We're having some problems here at the workplace, and it appears that I'm the only one who can have it all fixed and taken care of by tonight. Oh no, that sounds like a nightmare. The good news is that I figured out what was causing the problem and how to solve it. Now I just have to do the troubleshooting. To be honest, this thing is shaping up to be a real thorn in my side. I guess I'll be working extra hours tonight. That appears to be the only thing you can do right now, doesn't it? So what should we do about our dinner plans in that case? It's too late to cancel the cake and chicken and everything else, so it's probably already on its way here. If you wait for me, you'll undoubtedly be starving by the time I get home, so I suggest the two of you eat without me. That's terrific. Okay, the sooner I finish this, the sooner I'll be home and eating, so I should get back to work. Yeah, good luck. We'll be waiting. Three hours later. Is today a good moment to speak, Galvin? So, what's up, Mom? You're not working at this hour, are you? I just got out of the office and am now warming up the car. Oh, my. Don't tell me you had to work overtime today. I'm sorry to say it, but that's exactly what happened. 
I had planned to leave at my usual time, but we ran into some unanticipated problems at work, and none of my co-workers were acquainted enough with the project to manage it, so it very much rested on my shoulders. That is regrettable. On the positive side, I finished correcting everything an hour earlier than I had anticipated. That explains why you didn't show up to pick up Alice this afternoon, as I expected you to. Huh? But didn't Irene come over to take her up from your house? I waited and waited for Irene, but she never showed up. I tried calling her several times, but she never answered, and she hasn't returned my messages. I don't think so. Alice informed me she could walk home alone herself, but she's still in primary school. I didn't want to leave her alone in an empty house. No, seriously, what became of Irene? She said she was heading to a restaurant with a dessert buffet today, but I'm sure she'd be done by now. Galvin, pay attention to what I'm saying. Um, do you believe this has anything to do with Irene's feelings for Alice? What exactly do you mean? I'm not sure how to say it, or if it's even appropriate, but I'm Alice's grandmother and you're her uncle. Our shared blood binds the three of us together, and blood, as they say, is thicker than water. Irene, on the other hand, is a little different. Oh, okay, I guess you're correct. On top of that, I believe Alice is still recuperating from what her parents did to her. She's young, and I don't think she's had time to recover from the affair or Sarah and Louis' divorce. Despite the fact that you and Irene opted to adopt her and treat her as if she were a daughter rather than a niece. Isn't this your first holiday season with her? And her first Christmas since what happened with her parents? That's right. I thought she was doing a good job overall, but I've been preoccupied with work recently. I understand that the circumstance was terrible, but... For any child to be taken away from not just one, but both of its parents is heartbreaking. There is nothing more painful than this. As a result, I want you and Irene to be able to fill the emptiness in Alice's heart with wonderful memories, making this feel like a true second shot at a happy family. Of course, that is exactly what I desire. I think we're an odd family, and we're definitely going through some growing pains, but I'm going to give it my all. That kid is deserving of nothing but the best. I see. Let me try talking to Irene again. I'm confident I'll be able to reach her. Please notify me if anything unusual occurs. I'll always be available to give you my opinion on the subject, okay? Thank you so much, Mom. By the way, I'm sorry to bother you, but could you please care after Alice for a few more hours tonight? Sure, but why not come pick her up right now? I'd want to go ahead to our house and see if Irene is still around. That's what I mean. You're correct to seek her out, and I hope you do so soon. In addition, I still need to get a Christmas dessert. I wouldn't want to show up to Alice empty-handed. Yes, it is correct. So, since the bakery nearby is still open for a while, Alice and I could go pick up a cake and spare you some work. Mom, you made an excellent decision. Make sure she gets the flavor she desires. She deserves it. Okay, I have to leave now. I'll message you again in a moment. We'll be there waiting for you. Thirty minutes later. Hey, Irene. Pick up that phone. Oh, Galvin, you were the one who called. I mistakenly thought it was someone else. Seriously, where are you at the moment? My mother has been watching after Alice all evening, and according to her, you failed to take her up. What's the deal? And to make matters worse, why did you have to devour the entire dinner before any of us arrived home? I'm not sure what I'm seeing here. I'm at a loss for words. Hmm. Wait, you're already home? Wasn't I meant to be home already? It's simply that you said you'd be home late tonight. Yes, I finished earlier than expected. Now tell me, where did all our food go? Oh, well, I didn't want all that food to go to waste, so I said what the heck. I'll just dig in. Better than having it go cold and uneaten, right? If you weren't coming home... I figured I'd bring my friend from the buffet home, and we'd have our own small Christmas party. And now you've gone out after all that eating? What are you doing now? Oh, my friend and I were discussing getting drinks, so we're just hanging out at a bar. But is something wrong? That's why I believed you were in trouble, but you were too darn busy drinking to go pick up Alice. You've got to be kidding me. But, Alice, she's always really shy around new people, and she's never met this buddy of mine before, so she'd have a bad time going out with me. And some girl she doesn't know, right? That is not what I am referring about, and you are well aware of this. 
You left Alice, whom we planned to adopt as our own, alone with my mother to go the party on your own, despite the fact that it was meant to be all about her tonight. Is it really all about her? What exactly are you on about? Oh, Irene, did you really forget? What did I forget? I really don't know. Do you recall how I asked you what day it was earlier today? Yes, as I already stated. It is Christmas Eve. What do you think? Today is a special day. Something more substantial than Christmas Eve. What do you mean? You claimed that you and I were on the same page and that I didn't need to bring it up. But it was plainly just you attempting to get me off your case. Because if you truly understood what I was saying, you would never have considered pulling a stunt like the one you did tonight. Oh, really? Is this really so significant? I mean, I'm sure I remembered it from earlier in the conversation, but what was it again? Today is Alice's birthday, you moron. I can't believe you overlooked such a vital detail. Oh. Don't you remember? Everything we had planned for today's party was supposed to help her get over what occurred between her parents and make some new, better memories. But you had to go be a glutton and devour the cake, the chicken, and everything else, you selfish, selfish lady. Oh, hold on. Just a second, please. I assumed we received all of that food because it was food I enjoy eating. Obviously, that's a factor. But I was thinking that we could all enjoy it as a family and make today seem special for Alice. But I was just... And that's not all. You mentioned you brought a girlfriend to our house for a party, but are you certain it wasn't a man friend? Maybe even a boyfriend, if I may be so bold. Huh, are you mad? How could you suddenly say anything like that? Isn't that the competitive eater guy you've been hanging out with lately? You were observed holding hands as you came up to the home on your way back from your little date? While I was strolling down the street, I spoke with several of the more chatty neighbors. They didn't mind informing me what was going on. No way. Oh, and the neighbors said they heard you guys creating a bit of a commotion. No way. You couldn't be serious, are you? On my way home, I had a horrible feeling, so I asked Mom to watch Alice for a little longer while I checked things out. Thank God I trusted my instincts enough not to bring Alice home and show her what you'd done. That girl had been looking forward to tonight for weeks, with all the excellent food and the cake. I'm not sure what I could say to make her feel better about her favorite birthday supper being completely destroyed. The funny thing is, you know... We're getting divorced. Oh. Uh... Don't worry. I'll send your family a message about it as well. I know you're mad with me, but could you please slow down for a second? You are the one who stated that Alice needed a mother in her life, correct? Wasn't that you? Yes, but a mother who sneaks around behind her family's back and brings other men home on Christmas Eve isn't exactly what I had in mind for a wonderful mother. But I... I'll pack your belongings and have a chip ready for any way you need it. Just tell me the address. You don't need to come back here, and frankly, I don't want you to. No, no. Just stop and listen to me. I'm hiring a lawyer. They'll no doubt be pleased to walk you through the divorce paperwork and process. I told you to stop and listen to me. You hear me? You're the one who's wrong here. Please excuse me. You only think about what Alice wants and needs. You no longer think about me. You're a terrible husband. You say that? But weren't you seeing your iron stomach guy before Alice entered this family? How did you do? I remember it like it was yesterday. I watched him being interviewed online at least a year ago, and something he said stood out to me. He claimed that his girlfriend, Irene, enjoyed eating as much as he did and that he fell in love with her through food. He mentioned my name during an interview. I assumed it was a coincidence that we both had girlfriends with the same name at the time. But now I'm guessing that food-loving girlfriend was you, wasn't it? Wait, let me clarify. No need. See you later. After that. The following month, we divorced. I spoke with my lawyer and we ended up asking for $22,000 for the settlement. My now ex-wife Irene was rejected by her parents and had to find a new job to pay alimony. Aside from that, the competitive eater she was seeing informed me that when they first met, she told him she was unmarried and never mentioned me. He profusely apologized to me and appeared forthright so I assumed he was just as much of a victim as I was. Regarding Alice's birthday, my mother rapidly spread the news that we were throwing an unexpected party, and a large number of our relatives turned up at her house. Everyone brought dishes from home, and with the cake Mom and Alice chose that night, it turned out to be a vibrant, delightful event. 
Alice had a great smile on her face the entire night, and I drew a sigh of relief knowing that my family and I had rescued the day in some way. Hey, you! It's been a while. Unbeknownst to me, my brother's fiancé turned out to be none other than you, my former servant from middle school. I was really surprised. Hey, Karen. It's been a while. I was surprised too. Little did I know that the individual who subjected me to bullying, causing me to endure difficulties in my education, happened to be my fiancé's sister. Hey, don't attribute your own vulnerabilities to me as if it's my fault. You were socially isolated and did not integrate well into the club at all. In my role as the club leader, I made genuine efforts to engage with you in a constructive manner. Are you serious about that? We were on the volleyball team. I became the target of all the senior members who relentlessly pelted me with balls. Furthermore, you and your group consistently departed first, leaving me behind to handle the cleanup alone. Did you even make an attempt to confine me inside the gym? Moreover, I am aware that you were spreading false and malicious rumors about me. It's your own fault that you have a bad personality. By what logic are you saying that? Because of you, I didn't even make it to the graduation ceremony. I was glad you weren't in the group photo for a club. If you were in the picture, you would have ruined it. Still the same even in your mid-thirties. Well, I'm glad it was you who became my brother's wife. Huh? My brother's wife, that would make us sisters-in-law, right? I will use you as my servant for the rest of my life. Is that what you think? Call me your leader like you used to on the team. I don't want to. What? Besides, I have no intention of becoming your servant. Oh, wow. Have you become a big shot in the little time we've been apart? You can disobey me. A weaker-minded person like you needs to be told what to do. What makes you a stronger person than me? I just am. I don't understand what you mean. If you insist on defying me, I won't allow you to marry my brother. You'll have no right to interfere with our marriage. Hey, remember who isolated you from the rest of the school by spreading rumors about you? Who do you think it was? If I told my parents and brother, it would be easy for them to break off your engagement. I could just tell them you're playing around with other guys. Oh, or maybe I should tell them that you were a truant in middle school and hang out with the wrong people. How about that? Please don't. Don't ruin our engagement by making up lies. You're so desperate. You know my dad runs a company, right? So what? Actually, I work there. I work short hours because I want to live freely, but of course, among the employees. I'm the president's daughter, so I'm looked up to. If I were to tell these employees that my brother, who will take over this company in the future, is about to marry a useless woman like to you, how do you think they will react? So much fun! I'll talk about it at work tomorrow. Please don't do that. Then be my servant. Here, why don't you call me leader? I won't do that. Please give me time until tomorrow. All right. In the meantime, be prepared to pledge your allegiance to me. I love how hopeless you are. I'll text you tomorrow. Hey! My servant! Have you made up your mind? For starters, I need you to go to my office and do some work for me. Of course, I'm willing to pay you. I'll give you about $200 a month. Hi, Karen. How are you? You don't get to call me by my name. Why not? Are you really going to act like that towards me? Who do you think I am? I'm serious. If you disobey my orders, I will not allow you to marry my brother. I will tell my parents that I don't want him to marry you and I will break up your engagement. Then financing for your company is not going to happen. 
Huh? What do you mean? If this engagement doesn't happen, the financial help to your father's company will be terminated. What? I don't understand. What does the financial help for my dad's company have to do with your engagement? What's the connection? You haven't heard from your parents. I also run a company, like your father. Huh? Yes, and my company has about 500 employees. 500 is a whole lot more than my dad's company. Thankfully, the services my company provides match the public demand. Even with 500 employees, we are so understaffed. What? How can a miserable person like you be the president of a company? I was really depressed during school, thanks to you. To try to redeem myself, I studied hard. I haven't told this story to any of my classmates either. In case you're wondering, I graduated from South University. South University? Isn't it that really good school with a low acceptance rate? Yes. And since college, I've been working with people like myself who have been shut-ins. And for those who want to reintegrate into society but are too afraid to take the first step. I wanted to help them and do something for them. So I started this company. I am now working hard in the education and job placement industry. Then, that financing help means? That means financial help from my company to your father's company. Wait a minute! So in exchange for letting you marry my brother, you're going to finance my dad's company? Don't get me wrong. I am marrying your brother, purely for love. However, him being a future president of the company. He asked me for advice, since his father's company was not doing so well and was having financial difficulties. He told me a lot about what company offered and other things. So I advised him. Your father has approached me and asked me if I would be willing to be a consultant for his company. To take on new challenges, money is inevitably needed. Then, instead of borrowing from a bank, I thought it would be less risky to lend him money from my company, since I'm becoming his in-law anyway. If I were to participate in the management of his company, I would be partly responsible for the results if they did not come through. That is why I was planning to start financing his company when we got married. But if you, will now be my sister-in-law, is so opposed to our marriage, I have no choice. I love your brother. But I will give up on this marriage. I am sorry for the trouble. Wait a minute! Is my dad's company not doing well? It's probably just a matter of time before they go bankrupt. Are you serious? What am I supposed to do if that happens? I have only worked for my dad's company. Your parents have told me things about you. I think it would be a good idea for you to become more independent. What do you mean? I'm working and making money. You've been working only short hours ever since you graduated from college. You can take a day off whenever you want. You never have to do a job you don't want to do. Despite living in your parents' house. You never gave your parents a penny of your salary. How can someone who spends money as she pleases say such a thing? Did my dad tell you that? Why don't you at least pay rent or something? I don't want to. I've heard a lot about you from the employees too. You work only short hours, but you make people listen to you, don't you? As you can imagine, that made me laugh. Shut up. I'm the president's daughter, so I'm allowed to do that. Everyone needs to respect me. They are only putting up with you because they know who you are. There is nothing more annoying than an employee who doesn't do anything at work. It's none of your business. You're right. Our engagement's been cancelled. And I will no longer be financing your father's company or company. Your company's situation is none of my business. Wait a minute! 
What do you need? Shouldn't marrying my brother and financing my dad's company be two separate things in the first place? What? I'm saying don't confuse your personal life with your work life. How can you tell me that? You're taking advantage of your possession as the daughter of the president. We're talking about you right now. You decided to finance this company because you thought it had the potential for growth. Then, even if your engagement with my brother breaks up, keep the promises you made. Hmm. Somehow you seem to think you're saying something very right. I think you should understand the situation of the company you're working for one more time. As I said before, I think there is a chance to rebuild the business. But my future father-in-law, oh wait. No more engagement, so your father. Well, the bottom line is that the president thought it was impossible for them to do it on their own, which is why they asked me to do the consulting. If I were to make a full commitment, and if I were to finance his company, then they would finally reach a level where maybe he can rebuild his business. Sorry to say, but no one would normally think of financing such a company. It's too risky. Even if we could rebuild the business, we cannot expect a large return. Still, I decided to finance it because it is a company that my future husband will be running. For those reasons, now that the engagement has been cancelled, I have no reason to finance his company. Do you understand? Oh! Okay, okay. I'll let you get married to my brother then. Huh? What are you saying? I have no intention of marrying him anymore. Why not? Because he has an annoying sister like you. There's no way I would want to marry him. Why not? Without financial help from you, my dad's company will go under, right? Probably. I can't let that happen. But either way, sooner or later you're going to lose your job. What do you mean? Yesterday, after receiving a text from you, I told your parents the whole story. Then, your father said I'm so sorry about her daughter. We shouldn't have spoiled her because she is a girl. She doesn't work enough and I've been receiving numerous complaints from employees. I will fire her in the near future and kick her out of this house, so don't worry about a daughter. That's what he said. Are you kidding me? All true. How dare you? I can't live alone. Who's gonna cook for me? Do my laundry? Who's gonna clean my room? What about money? You're 35 years old, what nonsense are you talking about? Of course, you earn your own money pay your own rent. And do your own housework. I don't want to! I want to live freely in my parents' house. Look, I'm not complaining about you guys getting married anymore. You don't have to be my servant. So please tell my parents not to kick me out. I will not finance them if you keep living in your parents' house. But then your father's company would go out of business, so the end result is the same. How can that be? Oh, and since this is a good opportunity, I would like to ask you to take responsibility for what you did to me when we were in middle school. What responsibility? Because of you I have trauma. It was emotionally difficult not only for myself but also for my parents. The damages for emotional distress, the cost of the psychiatrist visits, I will charge you $30,000. That was a long time ago. Your parents said that they would not only kick you out of their house, but also disown you. All right, all right. I'll pay. I pay you when you're happy, right? But I can't pay you right now. I can pay in installments, right? No. Of course, you must pay it in full. What are you, evil? What are you talking about? I'm giving you such kindness even though you bullied me so much in middle school. This is what you deserve. Subsequently, Karen faced termination from her father's company and was subsequently evicted from her parents' residence. 
With her absence secured, I could finally proceed with my wedding plans. After a few months, our long-awaited ceremony took place. Despite her attempt to attend, we courteously clarified the situation to her and kindly requested her departure. Since then, she has successfully secured alternative employment and embarked on an independent living arrangement in her own apartment. However, this marks her inaugural experience in a professional setting, and she grapples with the challenges of acclimatizing to the work environment on a daily basis. In order to provide me with compensation, she incurred significant debt, resulting in a difficult financial situation for her. Leaving her unable to afford even basic expenses or enjoy leisure activities. Frequently, she attempts to seek solace from her parents through tears, yet her pleas have fallen on deaf ears as her parents remain unresponsive to her predicament. Alternatively, her parents are preoccupied with the ongoing restructuring of their company, leaving little time or attention for her situation. As a result of their efforts, their company's business is rebounding. However, I have made the decision to sever ties with her and refrain from maintaining any future relationship.